Yeah, yeah. Looking at my watch, it say it's time to get it. Yeah, talking about my goddess every day. Great day, good people. This is Alonzo Events. Enjoying this morning. Um, it is a little chilly this morning, so I don't think I'll be before you too long. And hopefully, hopefully I'm praying that this audio sound turns out real good because uh, there's a lot of background noise. But uh, let's go to God in prayer. Lord God, your name is holy and your will is done. May you speak to your children, speak to your people through me this morning. May my communication be clear and concise to the point to where your people can hear it, digest it, and apply it in their lives. May they be, may we all be the good ground that returns your seed 100 fold. It's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. The title for this message is Meek. Meek is the title of this message. We're in Proverbs chapter 9, verses 11 through 14. I'm going to read these verses and I do have a few references as well. So, for by the for by me thy day shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. Verse 11 is referring back to verse 10, which is talking about the fear of the Lord being the beginning of wisdom and then understanding, right? That's what he's saying. That's what that verse is saying. But by me, your days shall be multiplied. So through wisdom and understanding, your days may be multiplied. That word multiplied implies greatly increase or the years of your life being added to. So through wisdom, and understanding we can have longer lives i'm gonna take a pause there this isn't part of the message but it is a part of the verses right so i'm gonna talk about it because the decisions we make day to day determine the type of life or how long our lives can be we can see that reflected in the word and we can see it reflected in today's society in the word i'm reading through in my personal study in first kings and we saw how king ahab and a lot of other people, David, Solomon, because of them not following the Lord, which was unwise. Why? Because the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. So to be disobedient to God's word shows that we are not wise. All of us, because we all sin and we all we all fall short of the glory. We know the we know the scriptures, we know the words, but we choose to do something else. I won't sit here and ask or spend time figuring out why is that. I want you to spend time in personal reflection asking, why do I not or why do I choose to do something other than what God told me to do? And by doing that, we are taking days, years of life off of our own lives. So every day we wake up or every decision we make that's counter or anti or against what God told us to do, then we're taking years of life off our own life. Now, how does that look today? It can look like making poor decisions when it comes to putting food in our mouths. It can come to making poor decisions when it comes to how we treat other people. It can make, it can come to fruition to when we're not upholding God's commandments. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not bear false witness against our neighbor. Thou shalt not covet anything that is thy neighbor's like. He gave us these commandments for a reason. And I know somebody told you that you don't have to live by the commandments anymore and that the Old Testament is null and void, but I'm here to tell you that they lied to you. I'm here to tell you that they lied to you. And we are still to uphold God's commandments. And by not doing so, we're doing exactly what this verse says. We're removing days of life, years of life from our own life. So honor God's commandments and keep his word. That's where the beginning of wisdom is. Now let's get to what um, I wanted to talk about um, verse 12 if thou be wise thou shalt be wise for thyself but if thou scorn it thou shalt bear it alone so whether you're wise or whether you're scorned that word scorn is loops we talked about it last week it means to make mouths at to talk arrogantly arrogantly comes to boisterous and we're going to post I want read boisterous you're going to see the definition of boisterous because I think we need to understand what these words are saying and how it looks to us right so if you be wise you're wise for yourself and what does wisdom bring length of days and it brings a lot more stuff too right it's more valuable than silver than gold right we know all these things so we should be seeking wisdom. But if you're wise, you're wise for yourself. If you scorn, you shall bear it alone. You shall bear it alone. 
So those of us who do this arrogant talking, making mouths that deride, mocking, they say we shall bear it alone. So you're putting that burden, you're putting that weight, you're putting that stress on yourself, not on others. I'm gonna say it again. If you're being boisterous or talking arrogantly, you're putting that stress on yourself and not on others. Now it can impact others because some of us are married. Some of us are married and two have become one flesh. So the burdens that you put on yourself, you put on your spouse. I hope you're listening. You're putting the same burdens on your spouse. So in order for us to live together and have length of days to multiply our own lives, we gotta be able to let go of these scornful desires, of this scornful speech, right? Of being loops, of being boisterous. We have to walk in this word together. I hope you, I hope you guys are taking this thing out and I hope you're really listening and seeing how to apply this word. A foolish woman is clamorous. I think it's interesting how he goes straight to Solomon in his writing in his scripture when as talking about the boisterous speech. Now we know all genders, all, both gender, I say all, excuse me, both genders are guilty of scornful, arrogant, mocking, deriding, right? It's not a man, woman thing, but I think it's, I think it's funny, to be honest, how Solomon goes right into talking about a clamorous woman. And that word clamorous, he's saying, let's see, let me, let me, boisterous. A boisterous woman is simple. Simple is naive and knows nothing. Naive, we typically use that word as to be someone who is gullible. Like we use it in a, in a, in a way to say that people are easily led astray when it comes to naive. I believe this word to be saying that she's led away from who she's supposed to be. Because when we look at the word, James wrote and said that when we uh, look at the word of God, we are beholding our natural face. Natural is what we are intended or how we are intended to be, who we intended to be. So when we look at the scripture, the word of God who created us, we're seeing who and how he created us to be. So when we do anything else, we're going against what's natural to us. And we know that whenever you go against something that's natural to your physical makeup, to your body, that you, you cause harm to it, you do damage to it, right? That's why we, when we eat these processed foods and we're doing all this weird stuff that <laughs> people have come up with today, it ends up resulting in what? Shorting, shortened lifespans. I've been saying this for a long time, years, y'all. And I just saw an article recently and just somebody just brought it up where it was like, yeah, they said for the first time in history or since recorded history, whatever the word was, right? That the lifespan of people is declining. And I was like, look, I didn't need an article to tell me that. Why did I need an article? Because I saw my great grandparents. I, I was raised and had my great grandmother on my mom's side alive until I was in my late teens. I was like 19, 20 years old before she passed. She was in her 90s. My grandparents, however, lived to their early 80s. My aunts and uncles, unfortunately, now the ones that are living, I pray, Lord, length of life and length of days for them, but the ones who are past 50s. I'm, I had some great uncles and great aunts that lived to their 80s, to their 90s, but the people in our generation and the one before us, we're dying a lot sooner. So if you just look at the evidence, you'll see that, no, our lifespan isn't increasing why because we're going against what's natural to us sometimes unknowingly as far as the words we, food we're eating and that sort of thing but some of the things we do knowingly so now that you have this information you know how to apply it in your life right we can make different decisions when it comes to not just what we eat right but what we eat when it comes to this word and how we walk it out so we need to be upholding who and how god told us to be which is what the word of God. So we need to get back to what's natural, observing our natural face. Excuse me, back to the word meek. Meek. So a clamorous woman, a, a boisterous woman is simple and knows nothing. Why? She's going against the word of God. For she sitteth at the door of her house with a seat in the high places of the city to call passengers who go right on their ways. Notice she's not doing it just by herself. Instead of just being this boisterous woman who's foolish and whatever the case is, she's calling other people to her. And that's what happens when people are in the wrong. 
right? That's what arrogant, boisterous people do, is they lure other people in. Why not just walk this thing out on a personal level, right? For some reason, for some reason, what do they say, misery loves company? So this person is arrogant talk, they're bearing it themselves, they feel the weight of it, but instead of just taking that weight, putting that yoke on and walking it out their self, they call other people to them. They sit in the places in the city and they call others to them, right? All right. Whoso is simple, whoso is naive, let him turn in there. And as far as him that wanteth understanding, she says to him, stolen what is a sweet and bread eater, excuse me, and bread eaten in secret is, is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there and that her guests are in the depths of hell. I, excuse me for all the noise in the background, right? But what is she talking about? In this particular case, adultery, right? This boisterous woman is calling the foolish, the naive, to adultery, to adultery, right? So instead of us walking like the world or looking like the world, being arrogant, loops, making mouths at, talking, deriding, scorning, we are to be what? Meek. And a few references I have for you guys is Psalms 25 and 9. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. Psalm 37 and 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Come on, God. Come on, God. And Psalm 147 and 6. The Lord lifteth up the meek. He chasteneth the wide, the wicked down. He casteth the wide, wicked down to the ground. Excuse me. So if we're looking for that peace that surpasses understanding, if we want that life of abundance, if we're looking for the blessings that the Lord has said we can have, then we got to cast away that arrogant speech. We got to stop scorning, making mouths at, being boisterous. Mm. We got to instead seek to be meek and ask God to put that meek spirit in us so that we can decrease ourselves and let the Lord lift us up. Let the Lord lift us up. Lord God, I pray your people have heard your word and that they can accept this word to be meek. That they can come from a spirit of arrogance, from a spirit of cockiness. That instead of looking like or sounding like what we think lifts us up, may we be meek so that you can lift us up, so that we can make wise judgments, so that we can hear, Lord, truly have hearts that hear and not be puffed up with vain wind, with vain air of ourselves, of what we think and what we want and what we think we know. But instead, may we be instilled with your hearing heart, with your wisdom and with your knowledge. May your people walk this word out, Lord God. And I pray, I pray, Lord, that they've heard your word, that, you, that I did not get in the way. But thank you, Lord, for those who do hear because they are blessed. It's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right, people. That's it. Go in peace. Love y'all. Later.